on Worcester News tonight. A shelter in place at Quabbin Regional Middle High School this morning following the discovery of a loaded gun clip. Plus, neighbors on one Worcester street aggravated with baseballs destroying their property. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. State and local police on scene of a central Massachusetts school this morning. A loaded gun clip was found in a softball dugout at Quabbin Regional Middle High School. Parents say it was a nerve wracking situation, but students remained calm. Our Chandler Walsh joins us live now with the latest. Chandler. Olivia Quabbin says the school last used the field Thursday, but it's a public facility, so anyone could have been there since. Police say so far there are no suspects, and the school day did eventually go on as normal. Police on scene in Barrie as Quabbin Regional Middle High School shelters in place. The response after a loaded gun clip was found on school grounds. It can happen anywhere. I mean, that's the reality today. Stuff happens all over the place. A maintenance worker found the clip in a softball field dugout. Police say the magazine belonged to a handgun carrying seven or eight rounds. The school sheltered in place for about three hours while local and state police did a full sweep of the school. We got uh, three bomb disposal canines in, so they were able to handle the lockers. They were able to handle the, the building, the perimeter, and then the manpower, the officers, teaming up with faculty were able to handle the classrooms. No weapons were found inside or outside the building. The administration is thankful for a smooth and cautious response. For lack of a better thing to say, cooler heads prevailed. The kids were terrific. Our faculty was terrific. Um, all the police departments were terrific. High school principal Greg Devine says students were calm and cooperative. Some say they weren't nervous and felt safe while sheltering. They actually came in the classes with the cop and searched like everybody's bags, like everybody's uh, middle and high school and didn't find anything. Quabbin resumed a normal school day when the shelter in place was lifted. Parents say it's a nerve wracking situation. We have to let them continue on with their lives and go back to school and go to school every day. but. Um, as a parent, you know, I bite my nails constantly. Barry Police Chief John Carbone says the school resource officer will begin an ongoing investigation tomorrow. They're hoping to figure out how the clip got there and who put it there. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A man on the state's list of most wanted fugitives is now under arrest. Police say 42 year old Daniel Escalante sexually assaulted several children in and around Marlboro. During their investigation, police found out Escalante had moved to Nevada and was living under an alias. He was arrested in Reno. Prosecutors in Massachusetts are now working to bring Escalante back to the state to face charges. One Worcester City Councilor is asking the council to put a new rule about the sale of flavored tobacco on hold. Three weeks ago, the Board of Health unanimously voted to restrict the sale of flavored tobacco products to adult-only establishments. City Councilor Mo Bergman says while he supports the action, he's not sure it will stop people under 21 from buying or using the products. Bergman filed an order for Tuesday's City Council meeting. He wants public health officials to meet with representatives of the New England Convenience Store and Energy Marketers Association to discuss alternatives. It's been an issue for years, but now it's being brought up again at Tuesday City Council meeting. Foul balls slamming into homes next to the Vernon Hill Park. Neighbors say tree removal and bad netting are some of the major causes of the recent damage. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us live now with more. Roslyn. Olivia, neighbors say they're fed up with the damages and want home plate to be moved, so this does not keep happening. John Pasovich pulls out a bag of baseballs. He's found them all over his property near the Vernon Hill baseball fields, many causing damage. House has been hit, windows have been broke, car. Pasovich says foul balls have been a problem since 2010 when the city moved home plate on the ball field. He says his neighbors have also suffered damages despite netting being put up by the city. The nets don't work. They had trees, they cut them down, but the trees didn't work anyways. The issue will be discussed at the city council meeting Tuesday. Nick D'Andrea is the secretary of the Eastside Babe Ruth League who plays on the field. He sympathizes with the residents and says it is a tough place to have a ball field. But he says it's not up to the league to get involved with the decision making. I understand the frustration that the residents 
have, it's an issue between the residents and the city. You know, we are just asking to use the ball park. We have permits. D'Andrea says it's hard for them to play anywhere else in the city and no one is trying to hit foul balls at the houses. He supports whatever decision is made, but doesn't want the kids to suffer. I don't want to be a negative light in, 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 in a neighborhood. I just don't want the kids to not have a place to play. Pasovich is thinking about taking legal action and wants something to get done soon so no one gets hurt. I've got grandchildren. I'm afraid one of them is going to get hit with a ball. Now we reached out to the city for comment but have not heard back. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Serving up to 600 people a day with only one vehicle to carry the food in can be a large task. Monday, it all changed for St. John's Food for the Poor program when Fallon Health donated a new van. One of their old vehicles was totaled in a crash, leaving the pantry with only one van. Director Bill Riley says they still managed to get all the food they needed, but were making multiple trips a day. Yeah, it was tough some days, and then we decided to rent the van. Um, to cover the last couple of months because we really need it. I mean, Stop and Shop is such a big contributor to St. John's, we couldn't shot, we couldn't shot cut down. And Fallon House says when they heard about the crash, they knew they needed to help. It fits perfectly with our commitment to this community as well as our focus on addressing food insecurity, which is something that Fallon Health has been focused on for many, many years. So it fit perfectly. And so we saw it as an opportunity to give back to a community that's been so good to us. The new 2017 van will be used daily to pick up food from local stop and shops. It's been almost one year since a Southbridge nurse was stabbed on the job. Since then, Harrington Hospital has added in additional safety measures, along with only one other central Massachusetts hospital, and they're hoping more will follow suit. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us live now with more. Brittany. Olivia, Harrington Hospital and UMass Memorial Medical Center have added safety measure measures since the attack. Both hospitals say they've had safety training throughout the staff, added metal detectors, and increased their security staff. Metal detectors at the emergency department are one of many safety enhancements Harrington Hospital has made since a nurse was stabbed there last June. That day was certainly difficult for our employees, for the community. I'd say within a couple of weeks of the event last summer, we had these metal detectors in our um, ER entrances. The hospital has also increased its safety staff, installed new panic buttons, and increased card access security zones. Director of Marketing Blaine Schneer says they make a big difference. The assailant actually walked in with um, a kitchen knife um, that was hidden in his, his shorts. Um, so had these metal detectors been in place, um, that's likely something that would have been triggered. Nurse Elise Wilson was stabbed 11 times and was flown to UMass Memorial Medical Center in Worcester in critical condition. Kendra Szymanski works in the trauma center and says it was a life-changing day in the department. It shook every nurse in this department to the core. That's one of our own. And we had been talking a lot about general safety in the department, and uh, this just really brought everything to the forefront. UMass Memorial is the only other hospital in the state who have installed metal detectors since the attack. Szymanski says extra security is needed in ERs. Our doors can never be closed. You can lock all other doors on the campus, but ours you can never lock. But I have to tell you, I think to a person, the staff will tell you that that's something physically they can see and it makes them feel safer. Hopefully more hospitals are having these discussions and if it's the right decision for them, then it's certainly something that we would encourage based on on what we've been through. The Massachusetts Nurses Association says they are optimistic about Elise's law, which requires health care facilities to have an updated violence prevention plan. The bill passed through the House and the Senate. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. High school students in Shrewsbury say some cups and takeout containers are toxic. They want the town to ban styrofoam for the sake of the environment and human health. Alicia Palumbo explains. For restaurants like Brody's Diner on Route 20 in Shrewsbury, styrofoam is a big part of their business, from coffee cups to takeout containers. We have a lot of to-go orders, especially on the weekends. But next week, Shrewsbury will be voting on whether to ban single-use to-go containers made of expanded polystyrene styrofoam in food establishments. It'll be more expensive for us to get the supplies that they want us to 
use. I guess if the prices are higher on the like on the cost going out, yeah. we have to raise our prices we have to raise too. Our prices. These juniors at Shrewsbury High School who petitioned for the change think the cost will be minimal compared to the health risks. It leaches chemicals into your body once you eat off those uh, trays or cups. Do we really want to be feeding our kids something that we know causes cancer? The superintendent has been supportive of their efforts and the district crunched the numbers on what it would cost to make the change. With approximately 425,000 styrofoam trays used annually, there would be a roughly $24,000 annual cost increase for alternatives, which would be about a 10 to 20 cent increase per meal. What we need to look at is the health and the future for Shrewsbury as a whole. We think that it's sending a message to businesses that you can be competitive without styrofoam. And some restaurant owners say although it may mean finding a cheaper alternative, they're not opposed to it. They hear the ban about the plastic bags. We put them out, we use paper. The same thing can happen with styrofoam. It's a good move. The town meeting where residents will vote on the styrofoam ban is next Monday, May 21st. If it passes, it won't go into effect until January 2020. In Shrewsbury, Alicia Palumbo, Worcester News Tonight.